Good morning to the saints of North Creek and to the saints well beyond. Again, it's Wednesday morning and it is time for our uh, weekly devotion, weekly Bible study, however we want to call that, our Wednesday time together. And uh, this morning I'm going to be reading uh, from the uh, first chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke and also from the second chapter, another verse as well, a little later on. But uh, we read at the 26th verse of the first chapter. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in, in, in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting uh, this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, uh, which means uh, Savior. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of the word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you'd open our hearts and our mind. Not only would we hear your word, but we would become doers of your word. Wow, what a message to Mary. Um, just out of nowhere, this angel comes to her and tells her not to be afraid. And not only tells her not to be afraid, but that she is in a position where her whole life is going to change. She has no idea what the outcome of this change is going to be. And the angel kept saying, be not afraid, God is with you. And when we read from the second uh, chapter of Luke, we know that the angel, or the shepherds were out in the field at the time of Jesus' birth. And angels came to the shepherds. And they were afraid. They were terrified. And the angel said, don't be afraid. Do, do not be afraid. For unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior is born. His name is Christ the Lord. But do not be afraid. God is with you. As I read that uh, scripture, and then I read some devotionals for this morning, I ran across one that I said, this fits. This fits the scripture, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, God is with you. And it seems that uh, back in the, in the early 80s, a uh, young woman uh, in graduate school was going home for a break. Maybe it was Christmas time, I don't know. But the point was... Um, it was cold. It was winter, dead winter, and it was 20 below zero with a howling wind. She wasn't going to wait around. She wanted to get out of there and get home. So she jumped in her Grand Torino that wasn't always that reliable, that had kind of a history of just all of a sudden stopping. At any rate, uh, she had driven quite a ways and was only about 10, 15 miles from home when a car sputtered and coughed and shudder shuddered. And the engine shut off, and she just kind of drifted to the side of the road. Well, this had happened before, and she even had an ice scraper lying on the seat beside her that she knew exactly what to do. She jumped out of the car as quick as she could, because it's 20, 20 degrees below zero, wind blowing. She popped the hood open. She didn't even have the air cleaner on it, because she knew this was going to happen from time to time. And she jammed that ice scraper down to hold the carburetor open, or the uh, float, the choke open. And uh, she knew it wasn't getting any air as long as that choke was shut. That's what she'd been told. So she jumped back into the car and she cranked it and she cranked it, but nothing, nothing was happening. Frustrated, again she punched the door open, jumped out, slammed the door shut, and then stopped dead in her tracks. You know, there are those times when we do something, when we're in a hurry or we're in a panic, and then all of a sudden it hits us. We did something very, very wrong. And you know how you get that prickly heat that seems to come down your, or up your spine and around your ears? And you, you just know just what has happened. This is a disaster. She had pushed the button down on the door of her Torino, locking it. And there was the car with the keys in it, the door locked, the lights of the car on, the battery about to die. No way 
to get that car started. No help around a lonely stretch of road, 20 below zero, a howling wind. She would not last. But maybe <laughs> minutes, if maybe an hour, in that kind of a condition. And she panicked. She just, all kinds of scenarios went through her mind. I, you know, if a car does come, how do I know it's not going to be someone who's going to beat me up and rob me or maybe worse and kidnap me or abuse me or so many other things that could happen or I'm just going to freeze when I try to walk home. My coat's in the car, my boots are in the car, and here I am in the middle of this windstorm at 20 below zero. And just then, she saw some headlights coming down the road. She jumped up and down and she waved her arms. She said, I don't care. I mean, anything's better than freezing to death. And the car stopped and the window was rolled down. And there was this elderly couple in the car, which made her feel a little better. And she said, I I'm stranded here. I'm freezing. Can you help? And they said, certainly. Get in. She got in. She said where she lived. They knew exactly where it's at. They lived in that area. So they said, we'll take you there. Don't worry about it. We'll get you there. And so they drove her right to her doorstep. And on the driving away to her door, they had talked a little bit. And she found out that he was a pastor. He said a little small church, tiny church. He said what his name was and the name of the church. She felt good about that, that's for sure. And uh, she got out of the car and thanked him. And they left. And the next couple of days, you know, she asked all around town at the, you know, at the court, at the deli, at the grocery store. And on Sunday at her church, she asked around about this uh, pastor and his little church and the name of it. Nobody ever heard of it. Nobody ever heard of that pastor's name. And she goes, well, this is like the smallest town imaginable. And everybody here not only knows everybody, they know everybody's business. No, no one has ever heard of that church. Or ever heard of that name? Wow, you know, do I hear the little music playing? Rod Sterling, is this like the Twilight Zone? I don't think it's like the Twilight Zone. But I think someone who was supposed to be was on that road when they were supposed to be. And I'm sure, you know, Sherry says she was convinced. If nobody else in the world would believe her, she knew she had just met two angels. And she knew that God was watching over her. Now, we can argue about it. You can say, oh, it was just a coincidence and he pronounced the name wrong of the church or she caught it wrongly or whatever was going on. But I got to tell you, to me, it was either a coincidence or it was a God incident. And these two people may or may not have been angels or they may have been angels. They even may have been angels that didn't know they were angels. But God had them at this crossroads in this young woman's life. And that's just as possible as anything else. Sherry believes it. I believe it. I know these things occur. And I know they give us strength. And we're coming into this time when we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, born in a stable of the Holy Spirit. You're going, it can't happen. Well, it did happen to some of us to some of us. And some of us celebrate it. Some of us celebrate it with all the joy, and all the blessing of the Christmas season. And so we need to hear the angels as they were saying to the shepherds, do not be afraid for today is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, God with us. So let's celebrate. Let, let's, let's read that Christmas story over and over and over again. And let us know that angels and God are always with us. May the Lord bless us and keep us. Amen.